everyone and welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time here then hi my name is Lauren and on my channel we mostly talk about anything luxury but we also discuss lifestyle and beauty so if you're interested in any of these topics please consider subscribing to my channel and we'll get started with the video So in today's video, I'm going to be presenting you a list of the popular items that I almost bought but that I'm glad I didn't buy and why. So if you're interested to see my picks, then please keep on watching. So my first pick is going to be the Chanel Coco Handle. So very interestingly, and this is obviously a bag from Chanel. If you've been subscribed to my YouTube channel for a while, you know that I'm obsessed with Chanel. It's my favorite, favorite brand. So. Normally, I'd be thrilled to have any piece from them, but the Chanel Coco Handle is um, a bag that I have decided not to buy after really, really long consideration. So this was actually a bag that I had included um, in my luxury wish list for 2023. And then after, you know, trying on many models in the store and kind of debating it, I decided that um, this bag wouldn't really be for me. I've actually done an entire video on the subject where I explain in really, really long details why this bag doesn't fit my lifestyle. So if you're curious to see this video, then I will go ahead and leave the link to it in the little information link over here for you to see it. But basically, I feel like the bag is a little bit too small for me because um, the model that I would be interested in getting is size small. Um, I feel like size medium is just like too bulky, too big, so I would get the size small, but um, it's pretty small <laughs> for a handbag. <laughs> it's in size small, so yeah, it's pretty small for a handbag, and I kind of feel like it accentuates my height in like a weird way. Um, so this really didn't work for me. Um, obviously the price tag is pretty, um, you know, substantial. So for such a price tag, I'm looking for, um, you know, the bag of my dreams, like something that I really, really like and not some kind of like in-between reaction where I'm like, mm, this could potentially work just like it could not. So um, it also is a bag that isn't very, very practical. Um, I feel like it doesn't fit a lot. Um, in general, the closure system or like the way that it opens doesn't allow you to put a lot of things in it. So for me, this already like not, not the best thing. And then I just feel like overall, it looks a little bit like a school bag. Um, I think the look of the top handle for me is not the best because I already tend to look so much taller than everybody else. But then if I have a bag that semi looks like a schoolgirl bag, then it looks odd. It looks kind of like a joke. So um, I have decided not to get this bag. I almost bought it. I was at the store and I was there to buy one. And then last minute, I kind of decided that it wasn't for me. The next piece that I almost bought and then decided not to last minute is a Cartier Clash Ring. So this is actually something that I had been also considering for a really long time. So on um, this hand, I have a Cartier Love Band, the Cartier Love Ring, and then I have the Justin Clou Ring. Um, so I feel like this fits nicely. It's like a really nice stack. I'm, I'm satisfied. I feel like I don't need any more rings on this hand. But then I have my very empty left hand, which I feel like sometimes it's a little bit sad. So I was trying to find something that could potentially work on this finger um, for my left hand and I was trying to you know find some ideas. Obviously I don't want to get the same rings as I already have because that would be like a repetition. Um, I looked at VCA and I didn't really see anything that kind of like sparked my interest. I don't feel like um, the VCA like uh, vintage Alhambra motif ring is for me. I feel like it's a little bit too childish. So I was interested in trying out some rings at Cartier and I tried on um, the Trinity one and I didn't really like it and so afterwards I tried on the Clash one and I loved the look of it. Um, I felt like it was really, um, you know, a move in the right direction for me in the sense that it's not a super classic model. Um, so, you know, I tend to kind of stick to the classiest of the classic pieces and so for me, I am trying to break apart from that a little bit and trying to, you know, kind of build a little bit of an edgier side to my jewelry collection, to my, you know, bag collection, just to my closet in general. Um, and so I felt like that could um, potentially work, especially if later down the road I have like an engagement ring on the other finger or something like that. This would help like to tone down 
um, set engagement ring. So I love the look of it, but I really didn't feel like it was very practical. Um, so I didn't feel like it was comfortable for me at least. I kept like wanting to um, pull off the ring and to like remove it. I didn't feel like it was comfortable. So obviously, you know, I tried on a couple of different sizes and I feel like we had found with my SA the right size because a size up would mean that I would potentially lose the ring or, you know, especially in winter time, um, that it might be on the loose. And <laughs> obviously for this kind of price tag, you don't want that. Um, so I felt like it kept like, I don't know, like um, rubbing against my skin and I felt like if I had this ring for an entire day it would leave red marks afterwards so I was a little bit taken aback by that I still considered it and then I was like I mean again for the price tag I still feel like you don't want to be uncomfortable so I decided to let go of this idea and I'm still on the lookout for um, a ring for my left hand Speaking of rings to put on your left hand, this video is actually sponsored by Molly Jewelry. So thank you so much Molly Jewelry for sponsoring this video. It's actually a brand that features a variety of different jewelry pieces. Um, they obviously have rings, which is what I'm going to show you right now, but they also have necklaces, pendants, earrings, bracelets. I mean, they pretty much have like the whole deal. So let's move on to the unboxing. I really, really like their packaging. Um, I feel like usually the packaging for brands like this is kind of like, well, whatever. Um, but here it's really beautiful. I love the dark green color. This is totally my kind of like <laughs> shade of green that I love. I'm still kind of trying to find a handbag in this color, by the way. So if you do have recommendations, please let me know because I would love to hear them. Um, but yeah, if we open the package, it's kind of like this. So it opens on two sides, which is strange. I'm gonna try not to let go of everything. So yeah, it looks like this when you open it. And so it comes with a little travel pouch. This is obviously very practical and also a polishing cloth. So if you need to clean your ring, perfect, perfect. And now we are ready to take the ring out if I can without breaking my nails, yes. So um, the box is really, really cute. This is definitely the type of box that I will keep and that I will cherish. Um, I feel like, you know, when you're looking at purchasing like engagement rings or like uh, promise rings or anything like that, that are, you know, significant of like sentimental value, I feel like you want the packaging to be beautiful because it's obviously going to be a, some sort of a gift um, that's going to stay for a long time. So for me, that's important. And here is the ring that I chose ah. <laughs> here is what it looks like I'm obviously going to include like close-ups and matchats for you to see it but let's see um, if I can put it on yes so here is what this ring looks like so the ring is in 10k white gold and it features a two carat moist night stone um, I love the cut of it it's like the oval cut I feel like it's so so pretty I really, really like the design of it. So a little bit more about Molly Jewelry. This is actually a company that is available on Etsy. So if you are an Etsy fan, this is going to be for you. Um, every piece by them is going to be handmade by like expert craftsmen. So this is something that's obviously really nice. They also have a bunch of different um, customization options. So if you can't find a ring or a piece that's for you, um, they will custom make everything um, according to your taste, according to your needs and your size. So that's obviously something that I find really nice because I always have a lot of trouble kind of finding things that either fit me, my size, or me and my style. So um, I, I really appreciate that about them. And then um, they have a different options also when it comes to the kind of metals that you can choose. So like I've mentioned, um, this is 10K gold. Um, they also have an option with like 14K, 18K gold, and then sterling silver as well. So there's a lot of variety to choose from really. There's a lot of you know, pieces and kind of um, customization that you can add to your ring um, without a kind of hefty price tag. So um, the prices are pretty reasonable. So if you'd like to check them out, I will leave all of the relevant information in the description box of the video down below for you along with a coupon code. I would highly recommend that you check them out. They've been very professional and very kind to me. So please go ahead and check them out.
My next piece that I almost bought and then didn't is the Céline Triomphe bag. Um, and I was like this, this close to actually buying it. And, um, you know, I was kind of looking for an everyday bag that can fit most seasons. I'm still in the process of finding that. It seems very, very hard to find. I was trying to find one by buying the Louis Vuitton Pochette Métis. Unfortunately, this bag didn't work for me, so I returned it. And um, I was still trying to find something, you know, similar. Um, I have two um, everyday bags for summer. I have the Dior Bobby bag um, in size medium in color latte, so kind of like an off-white color. And then I have the Yves Saint Laurent Sec de Jour in size nano in blush pink. So very, very summery, but I unfortunately don't have anything else for like year round or even for like um, fall and then winter. So I was trying to change that and I came across this bag and I started liking it more and more. I felt like it had a lot of the things that I was looking for. Um, obviously the combination of black and gold hardware is really beautiful. I would have gotten it in black. Um, this is a crossbody bag that comes with a strap that is adjustable. So, you know, it has a lot of the things that I was looking for. And then I went into the store, I tried it on, and to be quite frank, I couldn't really find anything that I didn't like. I just had this like overwhelming feeling of this is going to be a trendy bag, a bag that's going to be trendy for like a year, maybe two. And then afterwards, like nobody will be into this anymore. And I decided right then and there not to buy this bag. Next up, we have the VCA Vintage Alhambra 20 Motif Long Necklace. And for this one, I think that I went back and forth for a really long time. I think my essay was like desperate for me to make a decision. So as you can see, I ended up getting the 10 motif one, which is what I'm wearing right now. So I was debating in between either this um, in Mother of Pearl and then White Gold, and then the long version in also Mother of Pearl and White Gold. And I felt like I liked both of them. I, you know, could see myself wearing both of them uh, for different occasions. So I kind of had to make a decision because obviously I didn't have the type of money where I could purchase both of them at the same time. So I ended up going with this one first because I feel like it definitely looks a little bit more youthful um, than the other one. I think, you know, for the other one, I couldn't have said anything bad about it, aside from the fact that because it's a longer style of necklace, in my mind, it does kind of remind me a little bit more of like a middle-aged like woman which I'm not yet. I will be there at some point, um, but I'm not there yet. Um, I'm only 29. So I felt like it was a little bit, you know, overdressed or like trying too hard, if that makes sense. Um, so I decided to let go of this idea and then get the 10 motif one first. And then for later on, I think I'm still stuck on the idea of getting the 20 motif one um, in maybe like, you know, five or 10 years, I think it will be perfect. And lastly, the last item from this list is going to be the Fendi Peekaboo bag. And here I think that what ended up happening was that I had waited so long to get this bag that it was no longer really popular. Um, so the train kind of had already left the station, if that makes sense. I think I was obsessed with the bag very, very early on, even in my um, you know designer bag collection. As I started to get more bags and more luxury pieces, it was still popular. But for some reason, I always had something else to buy. I think that I was focusing a lot on like Chanel bags. Um, I was focusing on trying um, very, very slowly to build my um, jewelry collection, which obviously um, is, is a big investment of many, uh, much larger than bags. So um, I felt like it was never really a priority. And then by the time that I had made all of the other purchases and that I was satisfied with you know, where my bag collection was at and where my jewelry collection was at, then um, I went to try on the bag in store and I was like, hmm, something feels off. Like I don't have this kind of like overjoy reaction of like, oh my God, this bag is gorgeous. I had seen it on my friends a couple of times, but like way back, like, you know, five years ago. And I, I found it gorgeous then, but then now that I was in store looking at it, I was kind of like, mm, nope, not going to be for me. So that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was beneficial and informational for you. In case you were looking at acquiring any of these items, um, you know that they wouldn't necessarily work for me. Again, it's not because they wouldn't work for me that they wouldn't work for you. Um, we each have different, you know, lifestyles, needs, choices, wants, body shapes, sizes, all that stuff. So. 
Um, it's just that for me, these items weren't really the best and I'm glad that I decided not to get them. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one.